a little bit high right Howdy there folks and welcome back to Bullets for Bucks. My name's Steven and today we're going to go over the very exciting new rifle from Weatherby. This is the Weatherby Vanguard Talon. It's their ultra light backcountry rifle in the Vanguard series. So first we're going to go over some of the basic fit and feel and then we'll go over the specs and then later in this video we will take you to the range and show you those results. So let's get started. First of all, it features the 3D hex recoil pad. This is the second generation, um, so it doesn't deform when stored like the first generation did. It's relatively stiff, but does a good job mitigating felt recoil while being ultra lightweight. And it has a nice curvature right here so that it's very much fits your shoulder. Then we have a hand laid carbon fiber stock from Peak 44, which is a company owned by Weatherby. It's a very well-made, ultra-lightweight stock. Um, however, it doesn't have filling in this back butt stock area. So it has got a little bit of a hollow sound and the structural integrity of this area, I'm not sure of. It does feature a sling swivel stud that is metal. I'd like to see that be a flush cup in the future. Palm swell right here, maybe just a little bit beefier than say a Model 70. On the bottom, you have an all-metal Cerakoted floor plate and trigger guard, and it does feature a two-stage trigger, trigger with a curved trigger blade with serrations down the trigger blade. If you push this button right here, it does open up the floor plate. You want to torque this with Torx head screws and an inch-pound torque wrench to 55 inch-pounds. Then you have a very high-quality made-in-Japan Hawa receiver, or pronounced in Japan, HOA, um, they make the Vanguard receiver. So it has an integral front recoil lug that the front recoil screw goes into, or receiver screw goes into. It is Cerakoted with a good Cerakote job. And then you have a bolt release on the left side. It's all one piece machine steel, has a knurled traditional bolt knob, two locking lugs, a plunger ejector, and a M16 style extractor. You can remove the firing spring toolessly by simply twisting the bolt shroud. To put the bolt back in, you simply place it back in. You don't have to push any levers or knobs. It has a three position safety all the way to the rear, locks the bolt and keeps it from firing. One forward, you can remove the bolt, but it will not fire. And then all the way forward, you can fire. This one came from Weatherby with a trigger of about 3.75 pounds, so pretty heavy. Coming forward, you have a relatively slim profile forend here. It has nice paint texturing on the carbon fiber stock, which gives it a beautiful look and a little bit of grippiness. And then it's flattened out on the bottom, so it's easy to ride this on a front bag when shooting at the range. It has a front metal sling swivel stud. I would like to see it have two or a flush cup in, on the side. Two, this is like a number two contour barrel. It is spiral fluted, I believe, by Weatherby. Um, and then it has a radial muzzle brake that comes included that is also that is also Cerakoted. It is threaded one half by 28. The front lug is actually spot bedded with glass bedding in the stock, which is good to see from the factory. The weight of this rifle in 300 wind mag is 6.3 pounds without the radial muzzle brake or the scope base. It's available in 243, 308 Winchester, 300 Win Mag, and several of the Weatherby calibers as well as 6.5 Creedmoor. The barrel on this is cold hammer forged. In 300 Win Mag, which this one is, it has a length of 46.5 inches. It has a 24 inch barrel, not including the two inch muzzle brake. Length of pull on these is 13.5 inches. Twist rate on the 300 Win Mag is one in 10. All right, let's take this to the range and see how it performs. A little bit high, right? Shooting low, it's probably just the zero settling in. Not bad, I think it flinched the last one, but for factory whitetail, but it's about 
MLA and a half. First off, um, we followed exact, precise Weatherby guidelines for break-in. And uh, it was very difficult out of the box to get sub MOA groups with this using factory premium ammunitions. We tried ELDX ammunition, federal gold medal match ammunition, SIG ammunition, and several ammunitions all the way from 175 grains up to 190 and then later on 200 grains. Now it's important to note that this is not my rifle, this is my friend's rifle, but I spent a lot of time with him testing it and helped him mount the scope. We shot about 80 rounds through this rifle without success. So he took it into Weatherby in person and they told him to shoot it some more. They also advised him that if they did test it and it came back that it could shoot MOA or sub MOA, they would charge him $200. In my opinion, that's bad business practice and definitely not a good way to do business. We went out and got some 200 grain ammunition, and then finally, after 85-ish rounds, we're able to achieve maybe 50 to 75% of the time sub MOA groups with 200 grain ammunition. Now, it is an ultra lightweight rifle, so inherently it does make it more difficult to shoot accurately, especially being a Magnum, but in my opinion, that's basically unacceptable. So the takeaway from this rifle is that it's an ultra lightweight backcountry rifle at an affordable price for what it is with an excellent quality stock, excellent quality receiver, decent trigger, though I wish it was a little bit easier to adjust from the factory. Um, I like the three position safety. I like the spiral fluted uh, barrel and that it comes with a radial muzzle brake, but unhappy overall with its accuracy so far. Hope you enjoyed this review of the Weatherby Vanguard Talent in 300 Win Mag. Thanks for watching Bullets for Bucks. Check out this next video and subscribe.